You're a phony. Of anybody to call us phonies. You're 0-2 against us. Who are you to talk? You're a phony. You're not even from this region. Go home and actually try and win a series against NA before you start talking. You're a phony. Okay, well, I, you know, can't say anything against you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Rendezvous, your spot for all things 100 Thieves LCS and around the org. And the regular season has officially come to an end with a bang. A 3-0 week that, quite frankly, felt really damn good in a time where we still keep getting called frauds. But we'll get into that later. First up, our game against Immortals was not necessarily the cleanest in the world. I'm not going to deny that. Up until about 20 minutes, it looked like we were going to lose. But we've had those games of split where it looks like all hope is lost, where nothing's going to work. And then all of a sudden, a few team fights and bam. It turns it on. Meech notably went the LS Kaisa build, which ended up popping off once he hit three items, which I guess is pretty standard for that build. And Quid had one hell of an Ari game. There was actually a moment where people thought that he failed flashed in a fight, but it was actually to flash an ability coming at him. What a so yeah, I'm not going to lie to you and tell you that it was clean, nor that I wasn't worried. I definitely was at points, because it's like Immortals was one of those trap games where it's like they were fighting for everything. And we didn't have as much to play for, but we still made it work. We still came back, we still performed well, and we got the dub. That's all that matters. Which again, given the context of the weekend, Immortals was no holdover for literally anybody. They ended up beating C9 after they were eliminated and held their own against Team Liquid as well. So yeah, IMT was solid this entire weekend. So again, not much to take away from the fact that we did beat them in the fashion that we did. As for the Shopify game, one of my favorite drafts, like, okay, obviously the game three of the week we'll get into that but what i loved most about this was that it was very clear that like we could go tristana and possibly flex it mid or bot i feel like it's not something that we see a lot here in north america it's more of an lck lpl thing but we flexed our picks perfectly so Leah ended up going in the jungle we took a jace top i was about to say zeus mid no it was not zeus mid it was uh it was yone mid and we had control pretty much this entire game sniper got a solo kill on the top lane on jace he then proceeds to get a double kill under tower throws it away a little bit in the mid game but for the most part the team just stomps all around i think quid was up in cs mid lane against karma tristana was doing well in bot lane like it, it was just a clean win all around and then we get into the final game that was NRG and where we drafted Shaco and Tank Vigar, which LS is calling his favorite game of LCS that he has ever watched, which, hey, I will take the praise wherever we can get it. We had some pretty int plays early. The Shaco, unfortunately, didn't do much, especially after he died like level two into the Ivern when invading their jungle. Both Meech and Ayla had early on deaths, but it ultimately didn't matter because Sniper got ahead on Olaf and just took over the game. Nearly 1v3'd had FBI not been there to steal a kill with a Varus, and even the bot lane that, yes, did start off bad, like, we played clean from that point on. We got a little loose. Uh, there was, I think, one death that Quid had where he's just, like, pushing inhibitor uh, as Vigar and just, like, takes the inhibitor and is like, come at me, and FBI, like, actually comes at him and kills him. And it's like, okay, well, I still got your inhibitor. So it's like, we were. it felt like we were playing ego there for a bit which i'm not gonna lie was a blast to watch and it was so much fun to see sniper pop off on screen and see quit having a great time and just overall i don't see how you can possibly be upset with this 3-0 weekend i think people just expect like 2019 or 2020 c9 levels of perfection from every team it's just like that's not how reality works this was an incredible final 3-0 week granted against some weaker teams but nrg was still no holdover even though dokla notably was in uh, urgent care on Friday and like was clearly not feeling well all weekend. We still secured the number two seed going into playoffs and that's all that matters. I had three interviews with players and staff from 100 Thieves this past weekend. On Friday, I talked to Meech. On Saturday, Spooks and Sunday, Golden Glue. I have all those already up in three different videos, two of which were reactions and the Golden Glue one I put out independently because I just wanted to have that out there on its own. It was 11 minutes and the video was already long enough. Otherwise, it just felt appropriate. And I didn't want to include it in here because I want this to be uh, focused on previewing the playoffs. And that interview was more about just reflecting on the season that was. So if you want to check any of those out, 
please do. The other fun thing from last night is that the team went out for a massive dinner. You had all the big names there. John Robinson was there, all the staff, all the players. And I had to chuckle a little bit because if you notice, they're eating in a place that has like the wine bottle decor all around them. I don't know whether it's like actual wine bottles and like aged wine, but it's so funny because Quid and Sniper both are not of age to drink in the United States. So they're just sitting there with the full display, like the full silverware and everything, which I guarantee they probably don't know the proper order of silverware. Quid might. I'm not sure if Sniper does of like eating out to in what's your soup uh, spoon versus like, I guess the forks are more the tricky one of like the fish fork, the salad fork, and like the entree fork, your dessert fork, your dessert spoon versus soup spoon, the three glasses, where they sit in position to it. Fine dining is its own individual thing, which yes, I actually did take a college course on it. So that's where it's like the golf industry had one weird perk and that was food and beverage and you had to learn about fine dining, which was amazing but yeah I, I just found the picture funny because it's like yeah they're all out celebrating but it's like i guarantee some of these players are like brand new to a situation like this before we go on to playoffs we have to take a trip around the org real quick and we have teasers of a new apparel drop is going to be the foundation line for both spring and summer and if you haven't already seen the video on this channel i got sent some of it early it's like an la lakers uh color combo like yellow mustard hoodie alongside purple shorts and a purple long sleeve as well i'm assuming it's just part of it because all the things i saw in like the 100 thieves apparel teaser on instagram were not uh what i had but if you're not familiar with the foundations line this is the 100 thieves apparel that is available all the time it's not a limited drop like Pokemon or some of the other ones like the Geo hoodie and the Dragon Ball Z stuff and everything. Like these are available all the time for everyone to purchase. They're at a little bit of a cheaper price point since it's just like aimed at getting something for everybody. And it's a really good way if you want to become like a fan of the org and you want at least something without paying, you know, 80 to 90 dollars for a jersey i mean some of them are even given upwards of 100 nowadays a t-shirt from there or even shorts from there are a good way of doing so i didn't want to wear it in this video because i feel like i've been wearing it a lot and i just don't want to beat it over the head into people like i don't know it just feels obnoxious in a way plus this is also our jersey that we won 2021 summer split with so it feels incredibly appropriate right now but yeah go check out the line and the other massive announcement was that we have the 2024 creator class for 100 thieves i would first say congratulations to all of them that got in but on top of that i am going to make that its own separate video in the off season we're obviously going to have a ton of time where i can go into various different hundred thieves things this series won't be a consistent thing in the off season but i want to try and talk to some people around the org and like expand my understanding because like when league goes away in march i can start talking about valorant in april but i can also start getting to know some of the creators some of the behind the scenes stuff and hopefully this leads to more content on the main channel front. Something that I definitely feel like has been lacking. And I wanna see this class establish its own identity. Obviously all the individuals will have their own thing, but I wanna see how they come together as a group and create content and put out, you know, one or two pieces a month all together. It should be really interesting and could drive a new generation of fans for 100 Thieves as these are all upcoming creators. Okay, we say upcoming, but like I consider myself like even smaller than they are. So I don't know what your definition is, but nevertheless, they're, they're on the bigger side of creators. They have pretty established followings, but I'm really curious to see where it balloons to from here. Now, it is playoff time. This is the playoff schedule for the entire split. Only three weeks. This weekend in particular, we play Cloud9 on Thursday. If we lose that game, we will play again on Saturday versus NRG, I believe. Or no, I think did. No, it would be NRG because uh, Dig won the tiebreaker, so they play the loser, assumedly, of FlyQuest TL, which will probably be TL. So again, Thursday, Saturday, this week, if we do win the game again, C9, we will play on Friday of the following week, like the first match of the week next week. But you can expect videos from me after each and every series. If we win on Thursday, I'm probably going to save the rendezvous again for like Monday or like next week. If we do lose, I am going to put one out immediately, probably for Saturday morning, just to, you know, recap everything and round it up and preview uh, what could be because I want this to solely focus on C9 because this is going to be our first true test against the fraud watch allegations. If you listen to any LCS pro talk that is not part of 100 Thieves, like dear God, God, do we never get freaking credit for what we do on stage. I can't dispute what Jensen was saying on pros where basically it's just like, nah, you know, we beat him pretty handedly on stage, so I don't really see him as a problem. It's like, fair, you know what, is what it is. We have a shit record against FlyQuest. I can't fight that. But for TL and for NRG to come out and be agreeing with the fraud allegations, like, who the 
fuck are you two to be talking? I get they see scrims. I get they arguably see more than we the fans do. But there is so much positive momentum building for 100 Thieves on the fan side. I asked the question on Twitter, but the answer was a little bit more favored towards obviously not being frauds. People are very much still skeptical about how they'll do in a best of five, which I think is entirely fair. I'm not disputing that. I've been saying that from the beginning of the split. How we do in this series is going to mean a lot for people. If we come out and we bomb out 03, then yeah, it's going to be a problem. But if we lose and keep it close or win, then yeah, I, I'm sorry, we're not frauds. The expectation is now for us to finish anywhere in top four. And a loss here does not put us at that mark. So, on the Cloud9 series, let's go lane by lane. Top lane is sniper favored right now. Fudge has been decent when it comes to turning it on in playoffs, but last year he notably didn't really all that much. Dokla was able to get the better of him in this entire split. For the most part, I have not been impressed with him. He's been consistent, but like consistently average. Sniper, yes, he has some int moments. That is a guarantee. He's a rookie. He plays balls to the wall at all times, but when it's clicking, he's on point. And in terms of their head-to-head -head matchup this year, yeah, Fudge got the better of him in the first game whenever he was on Udyr, but the second game, he got a solo kill onto Fudge. So that's sniper favored. And anybody telling you differently is just wrong or biased. Sorry. If you're going by regular season performance, you would definitely say that jungle favors River. I'm not going to do MVP or All-Pro talk. I can't because I have to vote on it tomorrow. So I can't really discuss anything on that regards in terms of my ballots, my votes, where I think like everybody ranks relative to each other. But I will just say regular season, you have to give the nod to River. He facilitated lanes better than Blabber did all season long. The thing though is that Blabber is a monster come spring playoffs. He does it every single year. So once we get to a best of five, his adaptability is good. River, while good, was not able to overcome Blabber in playoffs last year. So different team, different setup, really difficult to compare year over year, obviously, but I think like you got to give Blabber more credit in a best of five than people will naturally be giving him based on the performance of the regular season. Mid lane. Okay. This is going to be controversial. I know everybody's got that Nico game that just happened on their mind, and people are going to be really favoring Jojo Pune. But this is a dead even matchup in my mind. Jojo Pune is an incredible playoffs player. Quid, we haven't seen in a best of series like where, well, I mean, we saw him in one last year, but it's not the same as where he's at right now as an individual player. And we already saw Quid getting the better of Jojo in their later matchup. And even in the game that they lost, if I remember correctly, it wasn't, I think Jojo might've had a little bit of a CS lead on him. But for all these moments that people were gonna point to Jojo Pune, it's like, oh, he's popping off. He's hard carrying C9. He is 100% favored over Quid. It's like, I can point you to at least four other Quid moments as well. The, both the Talia games, his Ari game earlier this week, the Aatrox game. The dude's playing with a level of confidence that only Jojo Pune can match. But the problem is like Jojo Pune's obviously like the face of the league. So people are going to look at that and just inherently favor him. And I know I'm biased the other way. I'm not going to deny that. But this is an even matchup. It really is. Bot lane is where it gets interesting. Because even though Berserker has these moments where he can take over games and play well, especially on scaling champions, I have not been impressed with him, the split, whatsoever. Same thing for Vulcan. Vulcan on engaged champions is obviously better than enchanters. Ayla's had some iffy moments, but has also stepped up at points. I think his Milio is going to be one that he probably doesn't get most of the series unless we have a different identity that we want to go for. But I'd say both of these bot lanes this year, even though like Meech has the highest DPM of anyone in the league, his laning stats are a little bit meh. I think it's actually going to be exciting to watch Berserker versus Meech in this series. Both just are good at putting out damage in moments where they really need to in team fights. Both have issues with getting caught out right now and putting themselves in positions early on in fights or like for Meech more mid game and like rotations for Berserker more like late game dashing into positions where he really shouldn't be. But I think it's actually going to be fun to watch those two. But it, by far and away, this is going to be a, a top side battle in the early to mid games that will transition to see who can carry with their ADCs later. Draft wise, you have to give the advantage to 100 Thieves. That's going to be a given with literally every team other than FlyQuest throughout this entire playoffs. And my honest to God prediction, first time that I've actually thought about this, I haven't thought about putting a number to 3 100 Thieves. And I don't say 3 1 because I think that, oh, Cloud9 is going to, you know, I'm giving a charity game and not being willing to call a 3 0. No, I legitimately think that. 100 Thieves comes out with something game one, is prepped, is ready. The turnaround time for game two and the adaptations that Cloud9 will need to make will be good. 
And then people were going to question, like, oh, is 100 Thieves, like, actually that team that can adapt as the series goes on? Will these players fold after they've lost and need to bounce back from a loss? And of which I just believe they're going to step up. I believe our coaching staff is legit the best in the league, and they will prep us well for that moment, and we'll win games three and four. So, yeah, I do favor us over Cloud9. I don't know how long this went. The recording time is saying 22 minutes. I don't know what it's going to be whenever I chop it down. But this is going to be my message the entire week and the final thing that I want to get across. Please buy into the fandom. I caught myself doing this early on where it was like, oh, you know, we could be good. I don't want to let my heart get into it. You're scared to get your heart broke. Don't. Go along for the ride. The heartbreak is part of the thrill. The highs are high and the lows are low, yes, but you are more invested whenever you actually give yourself the chance to be a full-blown fan. So please, if you are on the fence, if you find 100 Thieves to be fun and you want to invest in a team, not just the players, a team, I'll be here. I'm ha happy to chat with anybody that's a little bit nervous about supporting a team over players because I know that's not unique or that's not what people are used to when it comes to League of Legends esports. But trust me, it's worth the ride if you can get the right org and the right people. And I feel like you'll be in good hands with 100 Thieves. Put your trust in me, put your trust in the players, put your trust in the staff and the orgs that we can make this a pleasurable experience for everybody. That's it for me here. And oh yeah, the list comes out on Wednesday. It'll be a fun video. I think you'll like it.